Okay, everything is pretty much dry enough that I can handle it. And you'll notice that little bitty tiny white spot there. It's just where when pouncing on the frat ground trees, it didn't quite get the, the coverage all the way down to the edge of the roof. And all I've done is just touch the least little bit of the dark green color on the brush and then I'm just going to work it in And then it covers it up, and you'll never know that that was there, except that you saw me paint it. Okay, now I'm going to create the little bit of dimension on the barn roofs, and I'm doing that by using a mixture of, well, actually, this is just straight burnt sienna. I used to do them a little bit differently, and now I just use burnt sienna paint. And I touch and then kind of drag the brush because I don't really want it to go all the way to the top edge because all I'm after is just a little bit of depth in the lower part of the roof line. I have to get this in my hands just right. <laughs> to do it and then the stroke got just a little bit wide on me and so I had to clean it up. Reinforce that dark edge under the eaves. Then, let's go back to this barn. I'm going to take a little bit of yellow. And I use this just to kind of simulate a highlight on the, the rusty rooftop. So I do the same thing. I do a little touch and drag and then anywhere that it needs a little more. I just come back in and just kind of dry brush that on and that creates the little bit of dimension on the barn roof. Then the same thing, but with just a touching motion, I do that edge of the roof, and then that's it. The little roof lines are finished. They're not getting nothing else done to them. Because if you've ever ridden around especially South Georgia, some of the barns that we even have here still on the farm that haven't fallen in, and the roof lines. When that sunshine in the summertime hits that roof, it's it can still be blinding. So that's just, oh, sorry about that. That's just my way of painting that effect in. So that's how I do it anyway. Then... I will add the, what I call the barn door and windows. Here on this farm, they had huge chicken houses because my in-laws raised chickens back when they farmed. It was one of their biggest things, so 
a lot of the barns have, I like to call them, window openings on the sides. And so that's it. That's all it gets. And that is a finished little barn. And for this one, because it was done with more of the browns, I'm going to use the brown color with just the slightest touch of black in it just to create a little depth to the brown. And once I get a stroke that I like the way it looks, that's it. I leave it alone. I don't fool with it anymore. So this one... I'm going to do just two bigger openings and that's it because I create my little barns just from what I see in my mind from remembering what some of the old barns look like and so that's our little scene so far so I'm going to start laying in some dirt ground grass that sort of thing. So I want some little roadways for the barn openings because I'm not setting these into hillsides like some of the little farm scene barns. So that one and So there's the little roads leading to that particular, you know, to each one of the barns. And then I kind of visualize in my mind, what are the rest of these fields doing? What, what kind of crops are growing in them and that sort of thing? So I think I'm going to just do a little brush mixing. And on this field here, you used to see a lot of red clay. You, you get the idea of all dirt just is not brown. So I'm going to just lay in some of the color. like that one and then I think on this side I'm going to start this one with mostly a yellow and it's probably going to brush mix with a little bit of green that's on my palette but that's okay because it's going to end up with green in it when I'm ah, when I'm done that happens a lot <laughs> I'm surprised I've been able to hold on to it for this long But that's one reason I don't hold it very far off the tabletop either. Is I know I will drop them. So I think those two fields look pretty good there. And just brush mixing some paints just to create a different base color and then decide as I go along what what I'll do with each one of those areas and most likely the bottom is going to all be dark set down my hand begins to cramp I hold on too long so a lot of times on the the scenes like on this particular one I do the bottoms dark so that it helps create the the three-dimensional look that I want for my painting, if this was left too light, then it wouldn't balance right with the, you know, from the sky all the way to the bottom. And so, as I work on this particular 
little scene, then I'll add some fences, I'll add some little bushes, I might add in a rock, you know, just various different things that I'll do to it to create the different dimensional levels within the, the painting. So I'll be back and work on it some more.